Now let's do some gear questions. A camera for the cold. Well, I'm pretty biased because I use Canon, but out of my little fleet here, I would say the 1DX Mark II because it's a beast. I think Nikon makes the D5 now. So anything that's like pro grade camera will be weather sealed. Uh, now the other question is, you know, how much you can afford, right? Because <laughs> they're pretty expensive. So if you can afford one of these big bodies, yeah, of course, get one. If you can't, I've had good success with all my 5Ds. From the 5D1 to the 4, I've put them through a lot of water and cold, and I've never had an issue. So, what gear do I use? So, my main camera now is the Canon EOS R. Kind of light, mirrorless. It's been a learning curve for me, but I've gotten used to it. I also use the 5D Mark IV and the 1635. It's 80% of the time I have the 1635 on the camera. And when the going gets a little rough, I'll use the 1DX Mark II. And I usually have the 24 on it because it does really well at blue hour. And this camera, because it doesn't have a lot of pixels, I think it has like 19 or 20 uh, megapixels, it does really well at high ISO because the less pixels, the less noise. Otherwise, I use a 100-400 that, honestly, yeah, this is my combo. 1635, 100-400 and the 24 I just showed you, there's the three lenses I use all the time. If I'm gonna do some clothing or more like a catalog uh, or just shoot people, I'll use uh, the 50 that's in here, that's seriously good. And that's it, but most of the time I'm just having the EOS R with the adapter and the 16353 on it. So in my latest picture, um, skin up to the bivouac, I used the 2414, and I probably used it at f2 because it pretty much crushes it at blue hour, like I said. And I'll use the US R for that photo, actually, not the 1DX. The camera that kicked off my career, the 5D Mark II, without a doubt. I shot the 5D Mark I for the longest time, and still to this date, I'm fond of the colors it had but the 5D Mark II just came out 2008, and that's when I started to be you know, more involved in photography. But it's only by 2010 that I could buy one, actually, because it was pretty expensive. Is using a drone for photography cheating, or is it a useful tool? It's a good question. I don't have the answer. Sometimes I feel like it's cheating, and sometimes I'm like, well, that was useful, because I would never think I could get this vantage point without an expensive helicopter so I'm gonna go ahead and say they're cool, they're legit. For the photography I do, so outdoors, what's a good camera for $1,000? Okay, I think you could get a 5D Mark II that's really beat up for $1,000, or close on eBay. Um, you probably have you know, a couple thousand frames left. <laughs> Otherwise, a 6D would be cheaper than that. 6D Mark I, solid camera. Uh, I'm talking about Canon. I don't know the prices of the other guys, uh, but anything from, you know, Nikon or Sony from that price range, I guess I don't know the models. Yeah, I'd say a 5D Mark II that's been beat down to thousand dollars, and that's if you want full frame, which probably you'd want because it's for me it's just way better feel in the image, more depth. Um, otherwise, I'm sure you can get a 7D Mark II for that money. Solid camera, fast. If you want to shoot sports, for example, kind of depends what you want to do. But to do what I do, I'd say I'd get a 5D Mark II that's been destroyed to thousand dollars. That still works. Or get a 6D Mark I for cheaper, maybe 700 bucks, and then buy a good lens for it. What picture profile do you use my camera on? Well, I always do the same thing when I get a new camera. I'll go and turn Contrast all the way down, saturation all the way down, and sharpness two bars down out of three. That's my, so it's custom picture profile. I've done. I've been doing this since the 5D Mark One, and maybe it's one of my old old habits. But at least I'm, the files I get have been consistently the same throughout the years, and I am familiar with it. So that's what I do. Do you shoot analog film? Yes, I do. Let me show you. 
You might have to do some focusing. Yes, I do, and I my favorite film is the Ektar 100 from Kodak. And I shoot it on the Canon EOS 3, another Canon. I love this camera because I can use all my fleet of lenses and it has autofocus and it's built like a tank. So hands down, my favorite film camera that's practical. I think there's another question that I was, the question was, what's your favorite film camera? And I would say that's the Hasselblad 500cm. Okay, what are some of my essentials when going on a shoot? Uh, okay, let's do this. So depending, I'd say in the winter now, layers, many layers more than I can carry almost. Um, I'll have shell, down ja puffy jacket, fold in the bag, and I'll have, in terms of essentials, I have always a little screwdriver to fix either my skis or to fix any of the lenses that'll go bad on the trip. Um, first aid kit, uh, in-reach spot locator, satellite spot locator, uh, so I can text people if I'm getting late or from anywhere I am without service. More food than I can imagine, because no matter how much I pack, I always end up hungry and sharing with, it, with other people. So a few wraps, if it's for the day, I'll just make some wraps with uh, salmon, smoked salmon and ricotta and some arugula salad, love that. Add some hemp seeds in it for protein. Uh, a lot of energy bars, two or three. Uh, I'll keep them in a Ziploc bag so they don't get wet. Uh, I'll bring spare batteries, one headlamp with spare batteries as well for my headlamp. And if I'm going to the backcountry, avalanche beacon, shovel probe, and batteries, spare batteries for my beacon. Camera-wise, if it's for the day, I'll just bring one camera, EOS R, most likely, with the 1635 and the 100-400. Is the EOS R the right camera for you as a pro? The adapter can be a bit of a pain, especially if I'm going between, you know, a native lens and a non-native lens. Sometimes I remove the adapter and the lens. Uh, the joystick hasn't bothered me. If you mean the little touch bar, it does bother me. So I've stopped using it and did some shortcuts for my ISO up top here. And you can use this to change focusing points. This and this to move. I feel good about using it because it's light. I can fit it in my pocket. And it's worked in every condition. So I'm gonna say it is the right camera for me. How do, I, how do you like the Boundary Pro 115s, the Black Diamond skis I just got? <laughs> That's a funny question. Uh, so I've skied them twice now. There wasn't enough powder to make the most of them. I found them to be really surgical and precise. They weren't as playful as I thought. So if you want to ski big mountains, big lines, and deep powder, I think they're 100% for you. Otherwise, if you want a more playful ski, there's other options. What sunglasses do you wear? Well, I carry several of them. This one still has a sticker on it. I am really bad at sunglass management. I lose them a lot. So I use easy peasies. And this is my favorite model. It's pretty quirky and geeky because it folds. So it's always a bit embarrassing to be, hold on. But the best part of these is that I haven't lost them yet in a few months because I can always just put them in a pocket. So easy peasies and tortoise. I think it's called, it's called tortoise. And the foldable ones. They're 50 euros, 55 bucks, so I just buy them in bulk because I'm going to lose them. 70 to 200 or 100, 400 and why? So I don't have the 70 here, but I have the 100, 400 for those of you who don't know it. It's this big tank from Canon. Pretty slow, aperture 4.5, 5.6. If you put the extender, it becomes 10. <laughs> so not for, not for low light. Uh, I'd say 100, 400 for me. I love extremes and having the 1635 and the 100-400 in my bag is perfect. I feel like the 7200 is too in the middle for me. I'll use it if I'm shooting people, still I just feel like I'm too disconnected. And if I want to get far away, I'm just going to bring the 100-400. So for me, I don't use it much. Andrea uses it a lot actually, but I don't. Yeah. Are you still using the Canon EOS R? Yes, I am. It's right here. What free ride skis do you recommend? Um, a lot of options. I really like my forefront Hojis. How do you keep your camera ready during a hike? I have this little system I've showed you in the ice climbing film. I'm gonna play it again. Coin, at least that's where I discovered it. 
by Mr. Ben Tibbetts. Uh, Come, it's tight. By Mr. Ben Tibbetts, who is a mountain guide in Switzerland. So he straps his, and a photographer, and he straps his little camera pouch to his harness with a few slings, like this. It's actually an accessory cord, a four millimeters, I think. And then you can just work your harness independently. And if you remove the leg loops, you can use that with a backpack, just as an independent camera system everywhere you go. First time trying it on an ice climbing wall. So I'll report back on it at the end of the day. So I use that um, most of the time when I'm outside because it gives me, it's independent from my backpack. So I can put my backpack down somewhere and go take my camera somewhere else with my harness. It's always on me. What are your go-to settings for shooting blue hour? Okay, 1.4. Um, ISO 1600 and 130 of a second. That's what I'm always at. How many lenses do you take with you on a hike and how about a multi-day trip? So I've already answered the hike one. Um, multi-day, I'll still bring 1635, 2414, 100-400. Essentially, I'll just bring the same thing, whether it's for a day or for a multi-day. How do you carry your gear in harsh environments? Well, well, so, I use these two guys. This one I use mainly for front country, aka airport travel, <laughs> even though it's built for back country. And this one just came out, and I've tried it once. I used to use a variety of Arterix bags that are not built for that. But this just came out from Lopro. It's not sponsored or an ad. It's called the powder. And you can A-frame your skis on it. And also, it has this little sweet compartment that fits a big 5D and many lenses. And also has a huge pocket at the top right here. All this space is for your clothing. So, this is what I'm gonna use.